So as you can see here, we have a graph or a network diagram of various cancers that are connected to the drugs that are used to treat them. Uh, however, uh, drug combinations are not reflected in this network because that would require adding another degree of complexity, uh, meaning if we added that, that the network wouldn't be too coherent to view. So uh, let's look at some of these different cancers. Uh, we've got We've got, a f we've got all of these being disseminated cancers, um, either leukemias or lymphomas. And all of these treatments that I found that were used for them were derived from the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, that's the NCCN. You can go to their website at nccn.org, and they have some uh, free treatment guidelines for doctors to use on these cancers, and that's where I got these medication uh, medication disorder linkages from. So first of all, let's, let's just look at the different cancers we have here. Uh, one here is acute myelogenous leukemia, aka AML. And as you can see, there's quite a few drugs used to treat it. When I hover over the uh, icon for uh, acute myelogenous leukemia, every drug used to treat it that I found in the NCCN guidelines turns blue. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, About 15 drugs used to treat AML. Uh, so I'll go on to the significance about that in a minute here. Uh, let's see, let's go over to multiple myeloma, a.k.a. MM. And you see almost the same number of drugs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 drugs. And then for acute promyelocytic leukemia, a.k.a. APL, we have relatively fewer drugs, uh, in this case only six. And then similarly for diffuse B-cell lymphoma, DL, BCL, that is, we have uh, quite a few drugs again, uh, comparable to the higher drug cancers. And in network terminology, when we say a node, like let's say this cancer node or this cancer node, when it has a lot of connections, we say it has a high degree. And in this case, a high degree could mean many things. And actually, if we go to a very low degree example, uh, this is a really good way to figure out what's going on with treatment here. So let's go to CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia. And I'm just going to drag this down here for a bit. And of note is that CML is the only cancer that has been known to be put in a majority of patients into long-term remission for more than 10 years, meaning some doctors consider this cancer cured. And what they've used to say cure this cancer, and you know, you're looking at you're looking at this thinking, oh, there's not a lot of drugs used to treat it. Why? Well, I can tell you why, because uh, these drugs, particularly these two, dasatinib and imatinib, uh, these two drugs really help that rate. Uh, to so-called cure the ca cure the cancer. Previously, the treatment was IFMA, that's interferon alpha, and it's also used in multiple myeloma. So, as we see here, an easily curable cancer like uh, chronic myelogenous leukemia has a low degree. Um, however, if we go out to say AML back here in a high degree, you know, we might we might want to say that. Clinicians are going everywhere trying to find different treatments for it. It's obviously a very important cancer since there's so many people, there, there's obviously so many people looking for treatments, but as so many treatments of that. But the problem is that people are still going through various different treatments. And you can also tell by what kind, you can also tell what clinician behavior is by the type of drug used. Now, this type of uh, radial tree graph, as it's called, um, that's my diagram format, does not let me uh, distinguish the different drug types. And as you know, there's different drug types used to treat cancer. Uh, for example, if we go over to CML here, we've got these three drugs at the top, ending in IV, are called tyrosine kinase inhibitors. They are very specific drugs with a very low side effect profile actually, and they are very targeted towards CML. 
And CML is, well, one thing, one reason it's easy to cure is that unlike most cancers, it's due to a very specific mutation. And that's called the Philadelphia chromosome mutation, which creates the tyrosine kinase that's unique to these CML cells, but is not present in normal cells. So these drugs don't affect normal cells as much. However, in contrast, if we look at, let's say, the drugs used for this desperate cancer, AML, um, all of these drugs pretty much, as far as I can see, are what are known as cytotoxics. And what cytotoxic drugs do, this is a bit of my oncologist humor here, but uh, from an oncologist friend of mine, was that they kill 95% of the patient, but 100% of the cancer. Uh, put in more serious terms, what they do is that they will, is that they will actually go and kill a very large portion of the patient's immune system. So, and again, leukemias and lymphomas are immune system cancers, so it does make some sense that you'd want to uh, try and clean up the immune system, so to speak. However, there is a bit of specificity with cytotoxics. Yes, they do, they do kill a very large portion of the patient's healthy immune system, but they more preferentially act upon cells that divide more quickly. And as we know, cancer cells are pretty much known for dividing too quickly, which is how they take over the body, and which is why cancer is such a deadly disease. Uh, so, but again, with, with, with the cancers like AML, we see a lot of cytotoxics, which uh, is really not, in, in, in the opinion of most, uh, most health outcomes researchers, is not a good thing because when cytotoxic drugs are administered, there is a pretty high rate of mortality, that is death, due to just the chemotherapy alone, as opposed to death due to the cancer. And in fact, some studies have suggested <coughs> that in predominantly cytotoxic regimens, uh, using drugs such as what you see highlighted in blue, as I hover over AML here, are actually not too much more effective than not treating the cancer at all. Uh, so from here we go to another, um, that, that was an acute leukemia. We'll look at a chronic um, leukemia here, which is similar to CML, but with a different cell type involved. But as you can see, it's not like CML because there's no neatly, you know, neatly targeted ter therapies like here. So we go down here and we see, again, a lot of cytotoxic citarabine, cyclophosphamide, pentastep, sorry, not pentastep, that's not one, um, etoposide, oxaloplatin, and you've probably heard of these used to treat other kinds of cancers as well, uh, solid tumor cancers, which are not on this network, for example. Uh, so it's, it's fairly obvious that there needs to be more targeted therapy, but the problem is uh, with CLL that there are more, many more, there's a greater diversity, I should say, of mutations involved uh, whereas in CML, it's about 90% of patients presenting with this disorder have that specific Philadelphia chromosome mutation I was talking about before. With CML, it's pretty much a plurality. So, uh, However, there are semi-targeted therapies, and these are known as monoclonal antibodies. And I'm going to hover over one right now. Go to blue here, rituximab. And rituximab is a synthetic uh, protein compound. Uh, it's produced in bacteria. But it's designed after an antibody that was directed against, I believe, um, DBC cells, cancerous cells. It's actually not very, it, it is mildly cytotoxic, but nothing compared to, let's say, chloramucil or bendamustine or some of these older nasty drugs. Uh, and again, here we go, rituximab. So there is some evidence of targeted therapy in, in at least these two disorders. Uh, but again, if we go to uh, back to this AML, uh, AML disorder that is so, you know, desperately looking to be treated, there is, as far as I can see, there is nothing that is not cytotoxic. So that's not a good sign uh, with treatment of AML. And if we go to diffuse B, B cell, it's actually quite similar to chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, you got here and you got here. They, have, they do share quite a few drugs in common, again, here and here, including rituximab, obviously. Um, in addition, um, DBCL is also treated with immunomodulators, 
Uh, one of them is uh, lenalidomide, and here it's also used to treat multiple myeloma. You can just hover over it. And any diseases you see turning blue are the diseases used treated by that drug again. So lenalidomide is actually an analog, meaning it's the chemical is quite similar to thalidomide, which uh, gained infamy in the 60s and 70s, especially in Europe, where it was used as a morning sickness drug, actually. And uh, we all hear about the cases of the so-called flipper babies. Uh, that's babies who are born with severely shortened or absent limbs because these drugs in this family of lenalidomide and thalidomide are both highly what we say teratogenic, meaning they tend to cause birth defects. But then again, that goes for almost all cancer drugs. Um, you know, while as these drugs are obviously not appropriate to prescribe for morning sickness in pregnant women, uh, they are appropriate to prescribe in cancer. And again, with most of these drugs, they're really not safe in pregnant women. Uh, even the more specific ones are not safe, which is why many pregnant women choose to terminate pregnancy or um, sacrifice their own lives in the name of the life of their baby. Um, so actually, thalidomide itself is actually used as a new treatment here for multiple myeloma, as we see here. And just like lenalidomide, it's an immunomodulator, again, meaning it's not really that cytotoxic. And, it, and just like interferon A, actually, which is also an immunomodulator, no surprise that it's multiple myeloma is co connected to two of these. Uh, so the immunomodulators are nice because they have less side effects than the cytotoxics. Uh, so that's why they, they do play a big role in the treatment of certain cancers that at least respond to them. Uh, lastly, we go to this cancer, which I found actually pretty unique because of its fairly low diversity of treatment, so to speak. There's not many drugs connected to it. That's just like chronic myelogenous leukemia. Uh, but unlike CML, APL doesn't have as high of a cure rate, unfortunately you actually do see it's connected to many cytotoxics, whereas CML was not connected to any cytotoxics. But going back here to APL, uh, we have two interesting connections. Uh, if you look in the bottom right here, uh, tretinoin and arsenic. And arsenic is actually just that, that uh, if you've heard of that toxic metal arsenic, same thing. It's actually a compound made with arsenic. It's called arsenic, arsenic trioxide, which is the full name. And has actually been a traditional medicine in uh, Chinese, Western, and Indian medicine, uh, folk medicine, for cancer. And it's actually found FDA-approved use in the U.S. For, for a type of cancer. So it's a great example of how uh, folk remedies can actually influence uh, uh, newer remedies that are approved and tried and true in clinical trials. So again, you know, we have arsenic here, and that's unique to promyelocytic acute pro APL because when I hover over here, you can see that's the only one that lights up, APL. However, here you see that lighting up in blue. And the same thing goes with tretinoin. And tretinoin is not a cytotoxic. It's not related to arsenic. Uh, it's actually a compound that's mostly related. It's called a retinoid compound. Uh, it's related largely to vitamin A, actually, of all things. And it's also that has some immunomodulatory actions, but has very specific actions against this uh, promyelocytic uh, disorder. So that's it for my explanation of cancers versus drugs. And uh, we'll move on to the next section, which is viewing drugs as co-treatments. We're going to take the cancers out of the network and just see which drugs are used together to treat these similar cancers and what that can mean for the practice of oncology as well as um, the industry and uh, the medical industry and the medical supply industry especially.